Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Mm -hmm. I would like to welcome you to this very important meeting today, Tuesday, September 4th, 2018, in the City of Portsmouth Council Chambers. Madam Secretary. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Commissioners, we will now have roll call. Please indicate your presence electronically. Thing is not Somebody working. Having some technical difficulties. We're going to have a roll call vote. Commissioner Williams. Present. Commissioner Thompson. Present. Commissioner Youngblood. Commissioner Hoffler. Commissioner G. Present. Commissioner Thaxton. Present. Commissioner Ricks. Four members of Planning Commission are present. Okay, thank you. Commissioners, before you are the minutes of the August 7th, 2018 public hearing, if there aren't any changes, we're in need of a motion. Can't see me. Okay. We're going to just do a roll call vote until we get the computers uh, straight. Okay, we're voting on the minutes from the August the 7th, 2018 meeting. As I call your name, would you please reply with a verbal response? Commissioner Williams? Yes. Commissioner Thompson? Yes. Commissioner G? Yes. Commissioner Thaxton? Yes. The minutes are approved by a vote of four to zero. Um, uh, announcements of future meetings and conferences. Please note that our next scheduled work session is Tuesday, October the 2nd, 2018 at 12.30 p.m. Sixth Floor Conference Room, followed by public hearing at 1.30 p.m. City Council Chamber. Items reviewed today will be presented to City Council for action at their October 9th or October 23rd, 2018 public hearing or as otherwise noted. Planning Commission rules limit a speaker up to five minutes to speak. We also ask that everyone please silence your cell phones at this time. If there is anyone here for UPZ-18-03 and UP-1807, those applications have been withdrawn. There is no further action is required. Our first item for today is CP-18-01 citywide. The city is proposing to update its comprehensive plan the new document will be titled Build One Portsmouth. The plan will include an updated future land use map, strategies, and tax tactics for achieving the identified goals and recommendations for funding and tools for implementing the strategies and tactics. Copies of the proposed comprehensive plan can be found at all Portsmouth Public Libraries and the offices of the Planning Department in City Hall and also online. Our staff coordinator is Brian Sweats. What's one more technical difficulty, right? <laughs> uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the Planning Commission, I am proud to present to you the Build One Portsmouth Comprehensive Plan. I'd like to take this opportunity to kind of do a history of the entire process of the Build One Portsmouth plan, and then I'll get into specific aspects of the plan itself. So first, what is a comprehensive plan? To, to get it all back to the very beginning, well, this is a blueprint for our future, and ideally this is something that is supposed to be designed with the inputs from the citizens so that it's not the city's blueprint, but it's actually a citizen's blueprint for what they would like to see Portsmouth look like in the future. Why do we need to have a plan? Well, first of all, it's a state requirement. Um, but more importantly, this is an opportunity to, for planning commission, for staff, for city councils, to promote a planned and orderly development of land based on shared values and visions. And hopefully we did a good job of capturing the values and the visions of Portsmouth citizens in this Build One Portsmouth plan. <coughs> We've been using Build One Portsmouth as a phrase interchangeably with a lot of different things. This is both the name of the plan, but it's also the process by which we created the plan as we went through the beginning stages of starting this process. We said that we wanted to use this as a chance for 
the city to re-engage with the citizens, to bring citizens together in a positive way as opposed to people attacking and tearing each other down. So we chose this name very specifically because we wanted to show that we were attempting to build something together. This is a list of the various members of our team. This, at least on the paid side of it, these are our various consultants led by McBride Dale Clarion and the project manager Emily Crow, who you all have met a number of times. But we've also worked with the following agencies, Clarion Associates, Planning Next, Kimley Horn, the Miles Agency, Tischler Bice, David Rouse, and Mr. James Fox. They all brought a different skill set to the table, and we hope that we've been able to maximize their ability to help us make a better city. As I said before, the idea that we had going into this was that this has to be a reflection of citizen values, not of city staff values. And so we tried to create a process by which citizens really led through their input, through their interactions, and through their activity. And we hope that we did a good job of engaging people so they continue to be engaged with the implementation of the plan, not just with the designing and building of the plan. We originally thought that this would be about a two-year process. We're looking at a little bit more than that now, but we had this broken into five sections. We had our initiation or our kickoff, our research and analysis phase, our planning framework phase, our plan drafting phase, and the phase we are currently in, plan review and adoption. Down along the timeline, you might may remember some of these focus on future workshop, division workshop. I'll talk a little bit more about those as we go through each phase. First initiation phase, this is when we brought McBride Dale Clarion on. We spent a couple months with them uh, reviewing city documents so they could kind of learn a little bit about the city. They also spent time going through the community, you know, when we talked in the work session about categorizing the different parts of the city based on the aesthetics and the form of the buildings and the layouts of the neighborhoods. This is all part of the team getting up to speed on who Portsmouth is. We created an outreach team that we use to try to help spread the word about our, our various public interactions and engagement opportunities. We had a number of internal and exterior or external stakeholder interviews. This would be anywhere from the Planning Commission and City Council members to the Chamber of Commerce to any other number of civic leagues or interested civic organizations. We created our name, Build One Portsmouth, the website, the slogan, the logo. We developed a communications plan to make citizens aware that this process was happening. And we started with our public relations efforts. Then we get into phase two, research and analysis. The big event here that you all may remember was the focus on the future workshop. This was when we went out and we asked people, what is it that you love about Portsmouth? And what do you think are our greatest opportunities? And we use that to start the conversation and creation of the Build One Portsmouth plan. We also use maps to identify areas of the city that, we, that citizens thought that we should be focusing on. We ended up reaching thousands of people. We had uh, over 250 people give input with over 1,800 unique comments. So we think that at the beginning we did a really good job of reaching out to Portsmouth citizens and hearing what it was that they had to say. You may remember the Trends and Forces report that Emily presented to you all. This was an evaluation of the city's current comprehensive plan, Destination 2025. We looked at what we have accomplished, what we still need to work on, and working on figuring out which of those things we need to bring forward into the current plan. Uh, MDC and their various subconsultants met with different cities' departments to do level of service assessments. That would be things like our roads or our utilities, our infrastructure. And we started building up our web presence, both through social media, through our website, and through our public relations efforts. During phase three, our planning framework, we came back to the citizens with our vision workshop. We went there to have people vote on the, the values and guiding principles, and that's where we came up with the four big themes for the plan, that the state should be thriving, resilient, evolving, and equitable. We worked with the public to refine that vision, to create actual statements that they could vote on, and we generated ideas for actions in different focus areas. And I'll talk a little bit more about the focus areas later as well. At that point, MDC and myself worked on creating an annotated outline of the plan and what it would look like. We designed the template so that we knew uh, when we took it out of Microsoft Word and put it into InDesign what it might look like, and that's what we have been looking at in the last two work sessions. And finally, we began to evaluate what we've been doing so far <coughs> against a sustainability scorecard. This was a collection of planning best practices so that we made sure that every, at every step along the way, we were doing what planners from across the country have learned is the best way to design and build a comprehensive plan. One of the members 
who one of the planning members who helped to design the sustainability scorecard was actually one of the sub consultants on the project. So we felt like we really got some some valuable expertise from leading planners, not just in this area, but from across the nation. Uh, plan phase four, the plan draft, and we've gone through at least five different drafts, not to mention, you know, every uh, sub draft of that. I've read this report a number of times. Um, we we went through as staff, myself, the planning department, and also city department heads. We put a draft available on the web that's still currently there and will be up for almost another month or so for the public to review as well. We use this opportunity to create our various char maps, charts, and graphs, including the future land use map, which was the portion of it that we expected to get the most interested in from the general public. And again, we used the sustainability scorecard as we kept going through our various drafts to make sure that we were hitting the best practices. And finally, review and adoption. It's not just you all and city council who have to approve the plan. We also have to get approval from VDOT and from the Hampton Roads Plan District Commission and the Department of Environmental Quality, and all of those should be forthcoming. We are in our fourth public meeting phase where the, the plan is out on the web and it's in city libraries for people to comment on. People are allowed to comment at this public meeting if they so choose. And before your next planning commission meeting, we will have a final draft for you all to hopefully recommend approval to city council. Okay, so the plan itself is broken into four big categories. The strategic plan, which are the strategies and tactics, the things that the city should be doing. The geographic plan, where we should be doing this, and this is where we will find most of our maps our implementation plans, the how we were gonna do that, that includes things like where should we get money from, what are some examples of best practices to, to use when we are implementing our tactics, and then the glossary and appendices, places to define the words and to find additional information for those who are interested. In the strategic plan, this pyramid represents the hierarchy of ideas with our guiding principles at the top, and then our vision statements, our goals, our strategies, and our tactics. Each one should support the one before. Each of, uh, each of these tactics also in, is categorized by its tool type, and you can see the six of them on the left side of your screen, and the different departments that are involved. These are the eight sub areas in the geographic plan, where we looked at the character areas, the future land use map, the vacant and under, underutilized, I should say properties, excuse me, historic resources, our focus areas, which were built entirely from what we heard from our citizens, places that we should be focusing on, environmental and open space resources, flood exposure, and our citywide connectivity and mobility networks. And then finally, in the implementation section, we have our initial action prioritization, what should we be working on first? How do we maintain the plan? How do we find funding and resources, and where can we find those funding and resources? Action types and responsibilities, what is the priority of the different tactics? How do we do them? Who will do them? How long will it take? How hard will it be? Tools, best practices and descriptions that we use for implementing our strategies and tactics. And finally, our implementation matrix, which will condense all of this down into a short spreadsheet so that people can see exactly which departments will be hopefully implementing each individual tactic. At the end, we have our glossary, which you can, an example of which you can see on the left, and the appendices, which you can see on the right. All the plans and studies and every other bit of information that we use to inform our ideas here, you can find uh, linked to in the comprehensive plan itself. And then our next step. So again, this will be coming back to you, hopefully, for a positive recommendation at your October 2nd meeting. And then we'll be referred to City Council, hopefully, for their approval on November 13th and November 26th. Sorry, let's just say November 27th. And then the hard part, then we actually have to implement it. Then we have to actually make it happen. <laughs> so I'll be happy to answer any questions from you all at this point. Commissioners, are there any questions for, for Brian? There being none, thank you, sir. Thank you. Madam Secretary. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a public hearing on item CP-18-01. If there's anyone here who did not get an opportunity to register and would like to address this application, you may come forward, state your name and your address, and you'll be given up to five minutes to speak. Appearing to be none, Mr. Chairman, members of Planning Commission, this public hearing is now closed. You need a motion right. to defer. 
Commission is the chairs in need of a motion to defer CP-18-01 until October 2nd of 2018. We're going to do a roll call vote. Our machine is still down. Okay. Uh, Amy. Okay. Commissioner Thompson. I would like to make a motion that we defer uh, voting on the, plan, the new comprehensive plan CP-18-01 until October 2nd meeting. Second. We have a motion and a second, Madam Secretary. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We have a motion and a second to defer CP-18-01 to our October the 2nd, 2018 meeting. As I call your name, please reply with a verbal response. Commissioner Williams? Yes. Commissioner Thompson? Yes. Commissioner G? Yes. Commissioner Thaxton? Yes. Four members of the Planning Commission, this item is approved to be deferred to our October the 2nd, 2018 meeting. Madam Secretary, I believe that concludes our agenda for today. Is that correct? That is correct. Uh, Mr. Hartley? Uh, just to remind you again of the September 8th uh, retreat with the City Council and all of the boards and commissions. Uh, that's a Saturday at the uh, Department of Social Services from 8.30 to 3. And then we do have the joint work session on Thursday, uh, September 27th, to talk about the zoning philosophy and use tables. Just reminding you once again. Okay. That's it. Thank you, sir. Commissioners, any additional further business? There being none, this meeting is adjourned. <laughs>